Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. My name is David Linko, and I'll be your presenter this evening. Now, um, a warm welcome to everyone this evening, and thank you to Kevin Young for the Property Club for allowing me to present to you. Now, who's warmed up for a great evening? And how did you go with the riddle? It's just to get you uh, get your thinking caps on, because retirement planning is something that uh, is certainly not straightforward. It, it incorporates a number of disciplines. A couple of people have said the dog jumped across the river. This is actually a riddle from Einstein. Only 2% of people can solve this. So the dog, uh, it, it could have uh, jumped across uh, if it was a small river, could have used a bridge. Uh, so I can see there's a number of alternatives. The actual answer Einstein was looking for was uh, the river was frozen. So there you go. But Let's push on without further ado. So it's my pleasure to present the webinar this evening. It's focused on helping property investors prepare for retirement. Retirement planning is typically aimed at those with superannuation as the key asset, but tonight I'll be helping you if you've got property, investment property as your key asset. It did follow another webinar I did two weeks ago, which covers everything we'll be talking about this evening, but in a lot more detail. And uh, that, um, that webinar is on the Davlin Wealth Management Facebook page. I did have to condense this um, because I've actually got um, a case study to do this evening. It's always great to see how someone with a similar asset profile as yours went on their retirement journey. So I thought that would be useful. But if you uh, did want to get the details, um, this webinar um, is available on the Davlin Wealth Management Facebook page I did it two weeks ago. And you can watch it for free, but it will cover the points in quite a bit more detail. But let's push on. I am planning to finish um, at eight o'clock. Uh, so I'll move through the material rather quickly. Um, and um, I do want to allow enough time for questions at the end as well. So my name is David Linko. I'm a mortgage broker. I'm an accountant. I'm also a financial advisor. Um, and I've been working with the property club since 03. I have five investment properties along with my wife. I live in Manly, Sydney. Um, with COVID though, 99% of my meetings are done by Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Um, the information is general advice only. So as I said before, retirement is a complex area. Do make sure you get specific advice relating to your own financial position. A little bit about me if you don't know about me. Just pop up your hands if you've never heard me before. Um, I have presented at Property Club events, PMC events. Also had the pleasure to present to them overseas as well. Um, so look, I can tell you about myself, but really the best place is social media in this day and age. So if you Google Dalvin Wealth Manager Manly, you'll find out some information about me, more importantly, what clients have to say. As I said, our main social media channel is Facebook, so Dublin Wealth Management. I have got the previous webinar. Um, a lot of content is put on there. When we do video reviews from clients, it's there. Advisor Ratings is a really good website. If you're not familiar with how financial planners operate, let me know the difference between one planner and another. We go to advisorratings.com.au, it's one word. And um, you can find out how they rate. Um, this is a government website that was set up after the Royal Commission. So that's a good one to pop in your financial planner or if you want to find out more about me. But as I said, I have been working with the club uh, for quite a number of years and through the club, learned quite a lot about property investment. I must admit, back in 03, I was very green, but it's through the club going to workshops, advanced workshops, and then combining that with my accounting and mortgage breaking and then financial planning skills and licensing that I've been able to develop a body of knowledge to be able to do retirement planning. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So a bit of information about who's listening this evening. Um, I had over 200 people register. Those who did register, 16% of you, um, good on you for coming to a retirement planning webinar when you're 10 plus years away. That's fantastic. 23% uh, 5 to 10 years, and I put 5 to 10 in ASAP together, so 54% are in the time frame where they need to be getting advice. Um, and the reason I say that is the sooner you get advice, the better you can, um, your position, your financial position to prepare for retirement. Because if you're not in the best position and you do it sooner, you can actually benefit from the um, compounding effect. 
and improve your position and have more years to, to get to uh, a desired position if you're not there. And 30%, I suppose, need more information. Um, and in terms of where people get their financial advice in relation to retirement planning, interesting to know 32% get it from family or friends. So that's not right or wrong. I refer to it as optimal or not optimal, okay? Because um, it, it is a specialised area. 29% get it from retirement planning, 24 an accountant, 12% property mentor, 2% mortgage broker. It's like me saying, um, well, I need to get my car serviced. I rely on family and friends. Well, they can help me to a certain point, um, but there's areas. And, and so it applies to any anything in particular. We have specialists, so we can actually provide specific advice, whether that's mechanical work, whether it's going to a doctor, or indeed when it comes to financial planning and retirement advice, which I'm covering this evening. Um, now let's talk about retirement concerns. Now I won't go through all of these, but the ones I will go through are highlighted in yellow. I've been doing retirement planning since 07. The key questions people are concerned about, and there's a lot of financial anxiety when it comes to retirement planning, and this was identified in the Retirement Income Review Report 2020, the federal government um, um, produced. A lot of good research there, so just Google Retirement Income Review. Um, and running out of money is the key concern. Um, you could say it also as having sufficient assets in the end. Another way of saying it, do I ha have enough for retirement? Uh, so it's a number of different ways, but um, that's, that's a key fear, running out of money. And as a result of that query not being fully resolved, people end up with having too much money. So it's, it's a really good one, um, and, and that has to be addressed in your retirement planning. Um, the other one is how do I set up my assets for retirement? And it's a big one for you as a property investor because all of you as property investors, and I put up my hand as, as that my key asset for retirement is property. Yes, I'm a financial planner. Yes, I love property. Um, it is what it is. Um, but the key with property is it's great from a wealth creation perspective, but there's not enough knowledge on how it works from a retirement perspective. So I'll help you understand that this evening. So how to set up your assets for retirement, I'll certainly touch on that as well. Okay, so let's go through a webinar overview of what we're going to cover. So I'll talk about the mindset. As I said, most of my clients are fantastic with accumulation, uh, but not sure what it means to have a retirement mindset. So I'll give you some points to think about and, and discuss with your family and friends or your advisor when it comes to having the right mindset for retirement. The other one is cash flow. What does it mean when we talk about cash flow in retirement? Absolutely critical to understand and I'll touch on some highlights for that this evening as well. As I said, I, I go into it in a lot more detail in my previous webinar and that's available on the Facebook page. Liquidity in retirement, what does that mean? You need to be very familiar with liquidity because you're moving into a new area. Retirement is very different to wealth accumulation. So we need to be very familiar with that and I'll touch on that. And the key for, for me to be able to answer a lot of questions is what we call retirement modeling. And no, it isn't about going to David Jones or Myers and getting a new outfit to play golf. It's financial modeling. And for those of you who love numbers, you'll get very excited. For those of you who don't, don't worry. I, it is key. You do need to get your head around it. Um, but we've developed a system for the numbers to be easily presented. I suppose that an advisor or a professional is only as good as their ability to present complex information in a way that you can understand it. And with retirement planning, it's not straightforward. I can't dumb it down and lose the details because I need you, the owner of the assets and the retiree to understand the whole process. So if you don't understand your advisor, you've got to keep asking the questions or move on. Uh, it's the same with any any area, whether it's your mechanic, your doctor, your lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll be covering those four and really excited this evening because Tony and Gail McCosh from Queensland um, are, are presenting a case study and I recorded that at three o'clock this afternoon, hot off the press. So that'll be great to see how they applied a lot of these principles in developing their dream retirement. But let's push on. So let's talk about the difference between wealth accumulation and retirement. 
So there was a number of you who were um, in wealth accumulation mode because you're 11, 10, 10 plus years out before retirement. So this is what you're thinking about, whether you know it or not. It's predominantly about assets. How do I maintain and build my assets? Negative gearing is fine. Why? Because you've got cash flow to support that negative gearing. It's a case of the negative gearing is a tax benefit as well. Um, so it's okay. The negative gearing supports you to be able to hold those assets. And the overall objective is to build wealth. Cash flow is not as important because you're earning an income. Um, negative gearing is not as important. It's about the act building of the wealth over time. Whereas when we look at retirement mindset, I call this the wealth drawdown. So you've got wealth accumulation on one end and you've got wealth drawdown on the other end. Now we move from assets into cash flow. When you think retirement, cash flow is critical. Another word for that could be liquidity. And I'll touch on that in the next slide or two. That cash flow is key. As a result, as a property investor, it is absolutely critical to, to look at your portfolio being neutral, ideally positively geared, or at best only marginally negative. Okay, now that may, if that's the first time you've heard of that, pop your hands up, um, but that is key. Um, otherwise, in, in short, you're required to keep working to hold a portfolio. A couple of people are raising their hands. So it's a difference in mindset, okay? So some of the information may be new. Talk about it with your property mentor, your branch manager at your next workshop. But in retirement, the portfolio cannot be too negatively geared. And I say too negatively geared, because often it takes time to return it to neutral, let alone positive. But if you are negatively geared, essentially you're, you're supporting the holding of that portfolio through your wages. That's a difficult thing. And the third criteria when it comes to changing into a retirement mindset or wealth, what we call wealth drawdown is understanding that cash flow is more important than building wealth. Now, if, if you believe building wealth is more important, more important, it's, it can still be um, work in retirement, but for most people, the assets are, are not producing enough income. So that's why we need to have a change in focus to building cash flow over building wealth. So there are just three highlights when it comes to the retirement mindset. And if you have any questions, just pop them in the box and I'll answer them along the way. Um, the, but now, in, in, in building a retirement portfolio, um, it's also important to understand, okay, that's great, David, wealth accumulation and retirement mindset, um, but what does it mean for spending? Well, let's have a look at that. So when it comes to retirement planning, 99.9% .9 of people have what we call a linear retirement model, meaning they start at 60, um, they, they, they go and get the information from ASIC or the Association of Super Funds in Australia and find out what the a modest, um, modest uh, income is in retirement and, um, and, and then allocate that for, for the next 30 to 40 years. Go on a couple of holidays um, and over time as they, as they can't be as active, um, well, they just move into more of a sedentary lifestyle. Um, so it's based on having the same living expenses for the next 30, 40 years. The problem with this model, however, is health declines, we lose the ability to spend. Uh, and we lose the ability to spend as much as we could have in the early and healthy years. And that's what the Retirement Income Review also highlighted. So a more efficient drawdown system is required. <coughs> Excuse me. The report that the Federal Government Commission found that most people underdraw from their retirement by about $10,000 a year. And that's quite serious because you're not living a full retirement, but also it pushes out your eligibility for the age pension. We don't want to miss out on that, not to say that's your target, but if you're entitled to a benefit, it's, it's important to, to obtain that. Um, and you also not only miss out on the opportunity to spend, push out the eligibility for aged care, but you also lose the ability if you're uh, we've got a set income for retirement for the fear of running out of money, you may lose the uh, opportunity to help the kids into property. What about um, the bucket list? Maybe buying the motorbike, the overseas holiday, charitable giving. 
all around the fear of running out of money. So um, I, I believe it's important to look at an alternate model for retirement. And that's what I call the Dublin retirement model. It's a health-based approach to retirement. Um, and in this case, it's about spending based on your health life state. And it's about, it's, it's about spending more in the earlier part of retirement. I call that active. Active is when you have your health and the physical ability to spend. Um, passive is when health problems start to occur. And you, you, you can't do the active pursuits you did previously. Frail is where you can't spend. You don't have the ability anymore. How long do each of these life stages last? I don't know. When I do the retirement modelling, I allow 10 to 15 years for active, 10 to 15 years for passive. So that could be 20 to 30 years from start through to the end of passive. And frail is normally five to 10 years. So the Dublin approach to retirement planning is about spending the larger part of your retirement nest egg in active. Why? That's when you have your health. If you spend the larger part of your retirement nest egg in active, um, you'll, you'll live a full retirement. Isn't that the goal of retirement? To do what you want to do with your time. Um, and in doing that, you won't have too much in the middle stages of retirement passive and therefore bring forward eligibility for government benefits. You won't do that though, if you don't know with a certainty that you've got enough at the end in frail. So that's often the big problem and that's the fear of running out of money. Pop up your hands if the fear of running out of money has crossed your mind. Okay, nearly everyone has raised their hands. So fear of running out of money, do I have enough? Um, if I spend this, um, can I afford uh, medical care at the end? Is, is always a big issue. So, but cash flow and retirement is absolutely key because um, the goal of retirement for, for myself as a financial planner is to, is to help my clients have a full retirement. A full retirement is not giving you X amount of dollars for the next 30 years and indexing it for inflation. It's to give you a lot more in active, less in passive, and a middle amount in frail. And by putting it all together um, and making sure you don't run out at the end, that's what I call a full retirement. That's, that's a dream retirement. Okay, let's, um, let's look at liquidity in retirement. Um, liquidity in retirement is, is a big issue because often people don't understand um, the retirement mindset. So when it comes to the retirement asset, the primary assets are the property portfolio and super. They're the key assets. And in miscellaneous, you've got all the other bits and pieces. You know, you may have a painting. Um, Often I have clients with, with paintings that are worth quite a bit of money, 10, 20, 30, $40,000. Uh, you might have a business, uh, you might have some crypto, share stamps. But I say to people, if it's not material, it's a miscellaneous asset. So I call primary assets anything over 200K. And when it comes to those assets, it's mainly property or superannuation. Now, the, the definition of liquidity refers to how quickly and easily your assets can be converted into cash. And unless you have sufficient liquidity, you can't live your dream retirement. Why? You won't be able to generate enough income. So your primary retirement assets, because it is uh, investment property, it's not a liquid asset. And add, add that to the uh, wealth accumulation mindset where it's often negatively geared, a lot of work needs to be done to make sure there's number one, enough liquidity, and number two, that it's neutrally or positively geared. Remember that wealth accumulation mindset? Assets were more important than cash flow. So if you're struggling with this concept, just ask yourself what's more important in wealth accumulation and what's more important in retirement mindset. It's a really good one to, to question because for wealth accumulation, you do that for 40 years, it becomes second nature. It's often difficult to move into a retirement mindset, but unless you do, you won't be able to have your dream retirement. You'll still be one foot in accumulation, one foot in retirement, and you might waste five to 10 years. Um, and by then, um, hopefully uh, you've still got your health, but if your health starts to fail, you've wasted essentially that time, where you, whereas you could have lived a full retirement. So that's very important. I'm not saying you can't hold property in retirement. Yes, you can. 
Um, but it depends your, on your financial position and your liquidity mix. Um, so I have, a, I have a couple, uh, I've, I've got a client in the ACT, they've, they've been retired for about 14 years, they've got three IPs. Um, we've helped refinance them a couple of times to interest only, um, and, and for a time they were principal interest, but they could afford, they can afford still to hold those assets, right, they've got enough liquidity. Um, so that's liquidity in retirement. I've got a question from uh, and saying, what about monies uh, from inheritance? Well, it comes down to um, what form. Is it in the transfer of a property? Is it is it uh, non-property assets like cash or shares? Remember, liquidity is the ability to convert it into cash pretty quickly. A um, couple of comments saying about positively gearing the portfolio. Can we possibly gear it to create the liquidity? Yes, you can. The question, and this is the dilemma, that's why retirement planning is a little bit more complex. Yes, you can possibly gear it, but let's now overlay the Dowlin approach to retirement planning, not the linear. And in, that, in, in, in the approach that I have to retirement planning, it's about living a full retirement, particularly doing active. And that's when you're healthy. So in the first 10 or 15 years, so it's not a case of having, um, having good liquidity, it's about having enough so you can really make a dent in the nest egg. And, and possibly gearing it is not enough. It's about making sure there's enough cash flow to th those active years are key. They are the golden years of retirement because you have your health. The longer you hold the portfolio, the greater the cash flow, but active is when you need it. So positively gearing works if you've held the assets for a lot longer. But if you've only purchased in the last say 10, 15 years, generally speaking, there won't be enough cash flow. Uh, so look, part of my exercise is to run the numbers to see if possibly um, gearing it does generate enough cash flow. Often it does generate a good amount of cash flow, but is it enough for active? That's the real question. Okay, thanks for those questions. Next slide. So let's do a bit of a, a recap um, before we move on to retirement modelling. So we covered four areas, the retirement mindset. Understand the difference between accumulation and understand the difference between the retirement mindset or in, in the first couple of stages, let's not call it a retirement, let's just call it wealth drawdown because that's what it is. So accumulation of wealth drawing down your wealth. And, and the reason I say wealth drawdown is that's more of a scary concept than retirement because it means that asset that you've been building up for the last 40 years is going to be depleted. So that's key, that's key. So that's the retirement mindset. When it comes to cash flow, Let's let's uh, add a bit of complexity and intelligence, I call it, to your retirement by by allocating life stages, active, passive, and frail, and now starting to create your dream retirement. And active, allocating more, passive, allocating less, and frail, even less again. So now we can really start getting excited about retirement rather than having X amount of dollars for the next 30, 40 years by allocating your expenses in this manner. It's, I can see the eyes light up when I talk to people. The third area is liquidity. So it's good to have the mindset locked in. Number two, you've got your cash flow sorted out. Three, do you have enough liquidity? Do you have sufficient liquidity? Um, I find unless people have ideally around five to six years worth of liquidity, they're not going to spend. Why is that? Well, you can see the, the liquidity running out too quickly. You've got to have a good amount of years of liquidity. Uh, so it's really important to make sure the liquidity mix is there. And then the last one is, does it work? Will I have enough at the end? It's, it's great to have these points, one, two, and three. And the other one, which I haven't got any, is making sure you've got enough in the retirement nesting. Now, don't have time to cover it tonight, but I did cover it in the last webinar. Um, but you've got to answer that question as well. Do I have enough at the end? And if you don't have enough at the end, do you keep working? Do you lower the living expenses for active, passive, frail? So there's a number of different variables we can, we can use. But ultimately, when you've got one, two, and three sorted, you've got to answer the question, does it work? Will I have enough at the end? Let's smash that fear of running out of money. So how do we, um, how do we answer that? Well, we put it together in what we call the retirement modelling. So let's have a look at that. Now, that's an awful spreadsheet. 
I've got to admit, I'm not making sense, but retirement modeling isn't straightforward. So my my skill as a, um, a retirement specialist is to make complex information meaningful. So this is the full details, um, but essentially the retirement model is a plan over the next 30 years, very detailed. Table one is about the cash flows, which talks about all the inflows, all the outflows. Table two is all about the assets and liabilities. So every year, I, I am able to let people know what their level of assets are going to be based on a set of scenarios. Um, it includes, it's a complex document, it includes your financial position, your properties, rental income, debts, land repayments, salary, wages, one-off costs, let's say you want to buy caravan, four-wheel drive, includes your work plan to cease or phase down, scenarios for one-off for when, so let's say you have to pay for your kid's wedding. Uh, I even had a client who didn't know when their kids were going to get married, but they had uh, some daughters, so we allocated some money because that would be occurring. So scenarios are very important and it allows you to stress test. And the other thing the retirement modeling does, it tells you how much you'll have at the end. We can include the aged care bond as well. I can even let you know when social security kicks in. So whether you've got investment properties, combination of superannuation, share portfolio, I plug it all into the retirement modeling. We give it a bit of a shape, put in the scenarios and answer the question, do you have enough at the end? It also allows for taxation as well. Um, although in retirement, taxation is not as important as when you're working. When I do the retirement modeling, it includes a tax, but when I do my high level assessment, I don't actually allow for taxation because that often can be a benefit. So we go in a little bit more conservative. So with the retirement modeling, as I said, it brings it everything together. The way, I, the way we do that is actually build some assumptions. So here's some assumptions. Um, you can see there's 27 assumptions. The first three are uh, when the projection starts, when will you be commencing retirement, when will Centrelink be eligible, number three. And then for number four through to number 21 are all cash flow assumptions. How long are you going to be working for? What's the cost of your properties? Um, what sort of CPI in, information should we allow? How much should we allow for capital growth? Any thoughts on how much we should allow for capital growth and residential properties? Given we're all property investors here, what are your thoughts? Pop me an answer in the question. Okay, I've got six. I've got an eight. I've got a seven. I like to have four as a number. So you may think, David, that's a little bit low. It is. Do you know how quickly properties double in value if it was 4%? 18 years. It takes 18 years at 4% for a property to double in value. And you might think, David, that's a bit low. It is. But once again, we're stress testing the retirement modeling. And we know property assets go up and down. Sometimes they'll be flat for a period and then they'll suddenly jump up for a couple of years. So um, in, in the, uh, the capital growth rate, often we use around that 4%. And you can see in uh, item number 28 on the right hand side, I put all the property information there as well. So whether you have 10 properties or two properties, I put all the details, the values, the rents, the expenses, line back, and we pop it in. And, and then in the next slide, I'm able to, this is just a snapshot of the retirement modeling, active, passive and frail. This is obviously over 30 years, but I'm able to, if you look at the last part of this slide, assets and liabilities table, Put cash flow aside for the moment, because despite what you've told me in active, passive and frail, if you don't have enough in the retirement nest egg at the end, it doesn't matter. We need to revisit this. So this model is complex, but it allows us to have peace of mind, it allows me to have peace of mind. For each one of my clients, I want to make sure in 20 years, if I see you walking down the street, I'm not going to walk on the other side. I want to make sure that you're still comfortably retired. Uh, so. The reason it's so conservative is we make it bulletproof and it's 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 got enough flexibility to be able to change it. So this is something we review every year. So retirement modeling is not straightforward, it's complex. It does require a working knowledge of a range of various and it does help that my background was as an accountant, mortgage broker and financial planner to, to put it all together. Um, and um, let's look at a couple of scenarios. Um, couple of scenarios people uh, often ask David what happens if I want to buy a property well well sure let's see let's see what works how does it affect your retirement my role as a planner is to educate you 
and let you see the impact. Not to say yes or no, but if you sell a property, okay, well, sure, let's see what happens. What if you positively gear the portfolio? Sure is my answer, let's see what happens. What about if I use my superannuation to pay down the debt? Sure, let's see what happens. I had a client um, who gave a property, uh, which was a holiday home to their kids because it was a family asset. The parents gave it to my clients and the clients wanted to get, and I said, let's see what happens. They had enough, so they, got, did, they did that. It was like a forward inheritance. So retirement modeling brings it all together and it provides peace of mind. So I believe retirement is about living your best retirement, not just a retirement, but your best retirement. As a result, it is a bit more complex because my goal is to get you to spend quite a bit more at the beginning. Now let's turn our attention to our case study um, featuring this couple. So um, just press play, did all the testing this afternoon, so I'm crossing my fingers. Tony, um, it's David Linko from Navalon Wealth Management. A um, warm welcome to Tony and Gail McCosh from Queensland. Tony, you've got your mute on. So. You can hear me, I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go, fantastic. So, thank you so much to Tony and Gail for agreeing to share their retirement journey. Tony and Gail, can you hear me? Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. So thank you so much. Um, over the next 20 minutes, um, I'll ask you some questions so other people can find out about your journey. And I'm sure. sure in the process, learn about how they can formulate their own as well. So. Before I begin, it's good to find out about um, the people in question. So, Tony and Gail, can you um, tell me a little bit about the photos uh, that you kindly shared? Uh, well, uh, the, one, the one on the left <laughs> is uh, our daughter's wedding. Uh, then the top top right one, I believe, was in Paris. That's our picture on from the background there. And then the bottom right uh, on the golf course in Queensland. Well, and I'll stop sharing so we can see you in a bit more detail. There we go, so that's fantastic. Um, so let's find out a little bit about you, where you're from, um, employment history, and what sort of assets you have so people can get an idea of um, uh, what, what you come to retirement with. Well, we've come from uh, Victoria originally. Uh, about that about six miles apart. Um, so we've been together since we were 16, so that's 40, something, <laughs> 47 years or something. Congratulations, guys. And uh, we, we moved to uh, Byron Bay uh, in the 80s, early 80s. Uh, from there, we moved up to Queensland, where, where we are now. And um, you're both working at the moment, and, and if you don't mind, your ages as well. So I'm 61, turning 62 this year. And I'm 60, turning 61. Fantastic. And you've got some properties, I believe. Um, can you talk to me about that and your association with, uh, I believe, the property club? So back in 2003, uh, I saw some advertising for the property club. Uh, I went to a couple of meetings. Just their regular meetings at uh, eight mile heights uh, to get me head around a little bit. Uh, we bought our first property through the property club uh, in that year. It took about six months, I think, before we bought our first property through. So we've developed, uh, we've got six properties all up, counting uh, a house we built, which we now we rent that out. Just as a side note, you, you rented out your home. You, you, you mentioned a good story, interesting story about that. Uh, how you came about that decision? Can you just share that. Well, uh, in, the, in the process of being at the property club, well, we've been to a lot of the seminars, and uh, yearly seminars, uh, the overseas seminars. And, and Kevin, at some point in time, he probably said a couple of times that if you own more than 50% on your house, you can't afford to live in it. 
So we moved out and rented it out. Um, that gave us the opportunity to actually get another property. Yes. Yeah, so we can come in. So it gives more rent. Um, and yeah, like Gail said, it helps get another property. Right. Um, we, we got one property through a self managed sharing club. Okay. Which uh, we, it's not a, it wasn't a club property, but uh, we've got four club properties. Fantastic. Before I forget, um, I talk to a number of people uh, all the time. I've had two people say to me they met you both at the actual um, uh, those overseas events. So they'll be listening to the webinar this evening. Uh, they said, oh, we know Tony again. So I don't have to know their names now, but I'll let you know afterwards. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you'll be able to speak. You say, you the next property. I think so. <laughs> Let's go back to my next question then. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Move back 10, 15 years ago. Uh, what were your thoughts on retirement? Um, and what was your plan for retirement? Oh, you get first. Oh, um, I don't know that we really had a, a plan back 10, 15. I think we wanted, we had an age we'd like to retire at. Um, probably once we started in the property club, we realised there was an opportunity to retire earlier than what the government wanted us to retire at. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a very positive experience. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's the same. I'd, I was thinking around the age of 60 for that particular reason. <laughs> Just it sounds like a good number. And, and if most people think about an age, what plans, if any, or thoughts did you have to actually make that happen and fund it? Well, it was all around uh, a capital growth of property for us. That's the only thoughts we had. We, we hadn't put any money in the share market. Uh, we were putting everything. All our, our, all our industry and property. And Tony, you mentioned you've got an SMSF, so that was in property as well? Yeah, that, that's, um, we we set that up so we could purchase another property because at the time, we we never had enough equity in our properties to get another property. Okay. So we wanted, we wanted another one. So that was the only way we could go about getting another property is to set up a self management and are you actively working at the moment, Tony and Gail? And what are your plans for retirement? Yes, yes. So um, I work as an uh, admin officer at a local high school. Uh, and our plans are to retire at the end of this year. We're very excited. Can't wait. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Um, and let me drill a bit more into the retirement assets. So um, I typically talk about a retirement nest egg making up all the assets available for retirement and including a home. Um, you, you mentioned your retirement assets are six investment properties, no home and no superannuation as a non-property superannuation? Uh, small, very small money out of superannuation because we converted that, that superannuation cash into a property. Got you, understand. Okay, so just make sure people understand the asset base you, that, that you're coming into. Um, and, and what made you think about um, retirement planning? Because I believe you initially applied very early in 22. What prompted that? Uh, look, we've been talking about Gail and at me for a while. <laughs> Harassing you? I think it's been, you know, we're spending, we know we're spending too much money. We're spending all our wage, right? Uh, we had reduced the, the loan on the self managed fund property a fair bit of money in. So we knew we could put money away. But we we had no vehicle for it. We we didn't know where to go really. Uh, but the property company great in accumulation, property accumulation, I find it fantastic. But we were past that. We we didn't want to borrow anymore. Uh, we we didn't want any more properties. Well we couldn't the bank wouldn't give us any more money anyway. So. so we we just needed someone to help us through the process of getting uh, in order through a retirement phase and, and retiring. We we weren't sure on how we were going to do it. So that's why, fortunately, I, I saw a webinar. From somebody in Sydney. Um, called Davlin or something, <laughs> and, 
if any after listing that webinar with you, I I recall I ran in the next day to ask you to help. I remember that help. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk about the journey then because I believe you made the initial inquiry, it must have been very early in 22, to when we actually developed the plan. It wasn't smooth sailing. Uh, there were some challenges and hurdles. Um, would you describe your main hurdle or your main obstacle or the thinking that you really didn't agree with you? Um, oh, it was, it was more about actually identifying why we were spending so much money, I suppose. And, and when we redirect that, if, if once we get to a position of understanding what we don't actually need to spend money on, and I remember some conversations with you, you you're saying, well, I don't know, I think you said, I don't know whether you can afford me at one stage, but, <laughs> but, but was because, it, because it wasn't worth it for you, because you didn't know we could get into a position where we could save money. Yes. To set up a proper retirement plan. It needs to be worth your while, um, and I can help you before you spend money on. And so cash flow was key. Can you talk to me about your first impressions um, about this concept called liquidity and active, passive, and frail? Well, that was very new to us. It's like when I was when I heard you talk about the weather, I thought, geez, and everything just made sense to me. I I haven't heard those sort of terms before about but I always thought you know you, you get into retirement with a pool of money and you just can you hold on to it for as long as you can. That that was that was always my concept of retirement. Not thinking, okay, you've only got 10 to 15 years of really active retirement. If you retire early enough, that is. Yes, yes. But like if you retire at 80, you, there's not many years of active retirement. So that's that sort of structure that really resonated with me. And that one for you, um, were any particular hurdles? Um, is, is We've always been good if, like, if we've got something to put money aside for, we're fine. But if we don't have a plan about where it goes or what we need it for, well, we, it just seems to disappear. And that's always been the way with us. So um, I think if we hadn't come into properties, who knows, we certainly wouldn't be retiring more. And if we hadn't come across you, we certainly wouldn't have been retiring at the end of this year. So uh, having that plan and putting it in place has been, has been a big thing. Let's talk about the retirement modelling, because um, that can be quite complex. But um, did you find that answered your questions in terms of what you could do and address fears? Um, many one people have this running out of money. Well, for me, it was running out of time, not money. Okay. And time was more important. But my father, he, he lived in 90, 90, 91, but he, he was working right up to his late 70s. Okay. And I didn't want to do that. Okay. And if, if, if you're going to change something, you've got to do something different to what the generation before you start on me. And that, that's been my thinking for a while. That's why we started in property. Fantastic. Um, did you have any fears or concerns, um, Daniel, about the oh, it, it sort of it was a logical thing, I think, for me, because when we've travelled in the past, we've seen people who might be in their 70s and who are struggling to be able to do the physical side of the walks or, uh, you know, different things. So we didn't want that. We didn't want that. We want to be able to do those um, probably more um, physical things as we, you know, travel. Um, you know, we both like to play golf, so uh, you know, we'll do some trail walks. It's obviously not too steep, <laughs> but um, you know, you don't want to be past being able to do that. Now we'll wrap up shortly, but it's always good to. Give people hope, and you've certainly done that because retirement is not straightforward. Share with us uh, a moment or two of the dream that you're looking forward to. I call it retirement dream. That's that's my goal to help you create it. And yours was certainly very interesting because uh, I've never heard of what you're doing, um, not as often as I'd like to hear. But tell me about your retirement dream. Well, straight up from January next year, we'll, we'll be in a caravan. Going around the country until 
for a couple of years, or or if we get sick of it, we just you know, we go once before travel around the country. So thank you. Uh, but in two years' time, and we're going to go to. We're thinking of Spain for six to twelve months to live. Um, when we travelled to, uh, to Europe in the past, we thought, oh, it'd be fabulous to, to come back and immerse yourself in the culture for six, you know, at least six months. So um, we've just started our Spanish lessons on YouTube. So, <laughs> uh, we're just we're just so excited. We just can't. And we've we've got that in the in the modelling that we've set up. Though, you know, that 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 modelling is so clear cut that for the next ten years. We know exactly what's happening. Well, the next two, really, but things can change a little bit in a way depending on the sale of properties for us. So, but the next 10 years are, are pretty well set for us. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Uh, let's end with any tips um, that you would give to, to people listening this evening um, who maybe, a lot of people maybe just like you. Well, if they're like us, they, they've got to a point where they can't acquire any more properties. Oh, they, they know the account because there's no more equity to draw on. Um, I, I get a plan in place straight away uh, for, the, for the next part of your uh, retirement journey or whatever. And, and make sure you get someone, find someone that can help you with that plan because we didn't know anyone. I wasn't a fan of financial plans, never had. Because I was already, if someone hasn't got as many properties, how can they get as many blocks? That's, that was my thing. And I think that was one of the things, David, when knowing that you had properties, you would probably understand our journey a bit easier, you know, a bit better than others. So it made a difference, that's, that's for sure. Now, one question I have um, home. You mentioned you don't have a home. No, not, not that, but we've got, we've got money set aside in our retirement plan for two, just one in two years' time. So we'll get through our travelling years. Um, then we'll, we'll, well, we don't know where we're going to live yet. <laughs> we don't decide. We don't decide. We, we, we like the climate here. We like, we like because we're, we're, we're golfers. We, we like the climate for the golf. Uh, so anywhere in a stretch, probably 200 kilometres north or south of us, we, we'd be happy. Um, I have a question which you may be able to answer as well. What about Centrelink? Have you determined if you're eligible uh, and how that fits into your retirement plan? Well, we've got it penciled in the modelling to, to take it up. Uh, it'll be five years before I'm ready, before I'm eligible for uh, the pension. So there'll be a small proportion that'll that we'll get probably in the first couple of years and make we go after that. So it, it's part of our it's part of our model. And yeah, it depends on how the rest of the properties continue to grow as well. So uh, if we need it, if it's there, if we you know it's part of the plan at this stage, but um, you know. look for me, to me it'd be great if it wasn't. I I will be happy not to say if there's enough growth in the properties, we'll just use we'll just use that money. I suppose if there's a benefit, you're entitled to it. It makes sense. Yes, that's true. Um, you, that is true. That's, yeah. that's true, and, and it'll all come down, I suppose, to how, how much we've got in assets. You know, there's all those criteria that, for the pension. So, uh, but if it's possible, you know, you tell them what we have to do. One other question. Um, you mentioned um, 30 years. That's what we'd like to do in the modelling. Um, what about aged care? Had, had it, what was the plan for that? Did you know if there was provision for that? Um, well, we've got a, a bond in there, which I haven't heard of before, that, which is shows. Um, so I, I, I don't know the details about that money, but I know there's, there's money in there. So so I, I think if, if, if there's one of you has to get, one's passed away and one has to go into care, the other one then needs a bond to go into care if you've got assets. Is that, is that right? Probably <laughs> class <laughs> Obviously, she was listening. <laughs> as long as one of it does, one of us does. It's really important to be able to pop the time by being close everything right to the end. So that yes. Is yeah. right, including age care yeah. as well. But uh, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and I uh, look forward to uh, sharing the retirement dream. As I say to everyone, do send me the pickies. Uh, 
being the grown nomad, and also uh, it's mine as well. So yeah, you'll be sick of me by the time we finish. Thank you so much for being generous to me, guys. Thanks, Okay, thank you very much uh, to Tony and Gail. I hope you found that informative. I did get a couple of questions. Uh, do let me know if the audio was a bit uh, wonky. Came through clearly on my end. Um, Hi, Tony. But, uh, oh, there we go. Came through clearly on my end, um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that was that was good. So actually, I'll, I'll ask you now, pop your hands up if the audio was fine. You could hear that. Okay, a number of you did, yeah. I did find moving the mouse did actually stop it, so apologies for that, but my first time, so we'll, we'll get it right in. I may even ask permission to pop that on the Facebook. Um, that's just the recording, and that way you can listen to it again as well. Let's keep pushing on. I've got a question from Martin. I'll just pause for a moment. I've got nine minutes, so I'll go pretty quickly. Um, Interested to know whether you advocate living in retirement on the income for possibly good properties or drawing down from the equity as originally promoted by the property club. Um, or will the living on the equity um, went out after the Royal Commission because that involved living, utilising lines of credit, which are not available now. Okay, so it's called cash out and I'm putting on my mortgage breaker hand. So good question, Martin, but the utilising equity is not available because the banking products aren't available. Um, as far as living in retirement on the income, it's not that I advocate or don't advocate for it. It's The question is whether it's enough for you to do the active, passive and frail. Okay, so um, my role is to let you know if it works for you, not to let you know whether um, I agree with it or not. If it's enough income for you, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you want to have a linear model or the double, it's up to you. But my role is to present options. Okay, um, we're on the home stretch. I always enjoy it when people give me some checklists. I like checklists because often a lot of information, what do I remember? So if you're in pre-retirement, let's uh, go through the checklist that you should be looking at every year when you go to your advisor, whether it's your family, your friends at the barbecue, mortgage breaker, retirement, financial planner. Don't have time to go through them all, but let me just go through one aspect of the pre-retirement checklist, which is absolutely key, and that's number two. What can I be doing better? That's the question I ask for my clients when I do the annual review. And, and, and one of the areas that we look at is, is um, superannuation. Um, we look at your uh, cash flow for your properties. We look at your um, surplus um, after all the costs to see if you can purchase again. Um, look at taxation and, and so forth. But if, if I can focus on number two in relation to superannuation, a lot of time, probably 90% of cases I, I meet for property investors, they're very good at uh, managing their portfolio, but they're not aware whether their super is working uh, optimally or not. More often than not, I can save thousands of dollars on your superannuation because it's just not performing well. Um, and it's not a case of trying to do a comparison because it's just too complex because there's several areas you've got to understand to do what we call a like-for-like -like comparison. But the earlier you do that, the more time you have to, to for, the, for the effectiveness of the super to build for your retirement nest egg. Uh, so it's not only the super look, I look at every year, I look at insurances, I look at wealth accumulation, I look at risk, a whole range of things. But that's just picking out Point number two for pre-retirement. Let's go on to the retirement checklist. So if you're nearing retirement, you need to have comfort in us answering these three questions. Do I have enough and how long will my retirement nest egg last? I, I define the retirement nest egg as every asset and liability except for your home. What can I afford to spend each year on living expenses and when can I start? So if you don't have those three questions answered, you're not ready for retirement. And believe me, there are crystal clear answers to each of these three questions. It's a case of keeping on asking. And as Tony said, find the right advisor. Advisorratings.com.au is a great place to start. Uh, you can look for an advisor in your area. You can have a look at their profile, have a look at whether they've got good reviews, bad reviews, have a look whether ASIC's given them uh, a bit of a, uh, um, a stamp to say uh, they haven't been compliant, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, in terms of working with us, before I um, go on to the questions and, and finish, we've got two models. One is a preliminary retirement advice model, where if you're pre-retirement, this is, um, I look at everything in the pre-retirement checklist. I don't answer the retirement questions. That's the cost for us to have a look at your position. It's on a fee-for-service. Um, so I put on my uh, mortgage breaking hat, put on my financial planning hat and let you know whether you're on track or whether you could be doing better. So it's a critical analysis of your financial position to let you take advantage of the opportunities to move forward. And in terms of retirement modelling advice, that's where I answer the three questions. That involves retirement modelling, the first one doesn't. Um, so it, it answers the questions uh, of when can I start, how much can I live on and what do I need to do? Centrelink is included. Um, we do the 30 years. Um, if asset sales are required, we'll look at that. Positive gearing, uh, look at the negative cash flow, very comprehensive. And it's from $6,600, that's on a fee for service. And, and the fee does depend on your complexity. So if, for example, you're self-employed, um, you've got an SMSF, if you've got more than uh, eight properties as the guideline, it, it can increase as well. So they're the services that we offer. Let's go through some registration questions on the home stretch now. And I've got a couple that have come in as well, so I'll get to those. So, Lynn, how do I access money when they're tied up in supporting, tied up supporting assets and income? I actually don't. This is my staff put it together. I don't know what you're talking about, sorry, Lynn. Uh, when they're tied up supporting assets and income. Well, you need to determine what your net position is, I suppose, but it's too, Specific. I don't actually, I need to understand your financial position. Um, Daryl, working out how to get the drawdown from my neutrally geared properties and finally pay off my mortgage at the same time. That's a very specific question. Um, how to get the drawdown? Well, if they're neutrally geared, there's no surplus cash flow. So, unless you've got other assets or you're prepared to sell, you can't get lines of credit, as I explained to Martin earlier. Uh, how do you pay off the mortgage? Well, it's, it's a case of looking at your full position, Darren, and indeed looking at your nest egg. Christina wants to ask, uh, being unable to leave an inheritance for the children, grandchildren. Retirement planning is about you first. Um, and if you're, if that is important, I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's if that is important, we reduce your nest egg to allow for that. And then with the reduction in the nest egg, is that enough for your full retirement? Okay. Uh, Rod from Queensland Tasks, aspects of holding property after retirement while drawing allocation. Look, I, I, to tax is not a primary objective in retirement because the benefits are removed. Okay, I do include tax in the modelling, but it's not primary and a primary objective. It is when you sell, um, but there's management strategies for that as well. Peter says, with the cost of new property so high and large loans required, how can you continue to buy more properties? You're in Victoria. Look, there's better people position to answer that. Roger Galway's in Victoria, very astute as a branch manager. Um, have a chat to Roger, he can answer that a lot better than me. Morag, my property holding stopped me from accessing a pension. Is there a way to hold an access? Absolutely, you should be going for, in retirement, my goal in the retirement modelling is to optimise the, um, um, optimise the financial position. So during passive, that's a second stage, you, you access the pension, whether it's a part pension, but aim to get a full pension by the end of passive. That's, the age pension is several discussions, several webinar discussions, so, but the goal should be to uh, access the aged care pension. Um, Ken, uh, another one from the NT, cash flow on op properties in times of rising rates and everything else. Yep, absolutely, it's challenging right now. A key focus for me is cash flow for my clients and how we manage that. We do have a lender um, who is a more ultimate in terms of refinancing. As long as you can provide me income, regular income going into your account, you've got a clean credit record, the normal rules of serviceability are removed. So as long as you can show me regular income in the form of salary wages, I've got a clean credit, um, and, and I can actually look at refinancing. So that's something I can assist with if you're interested. Virginia, sorting out what properties to sell down, how best to organise finances in the next five years. That's Retirement Planning 101, Virginia. So it's a good one. And Tony and Gail went through the exact same process. Um, 
wrapping up, I'll take one more question uh, that you've sent in. What are your thoughts on leaving properties? Yeah, um, I, I think that's a good, uh, leaving properties for the kids, absolutely, but depends what's left over. And if you leave too much, it'll affect you for what you have for retirement. Uh, is it wise to move property into a trust project to increase eligibility for pension? When you say a trust, there's many different types of trust, so it depends on the impact for age pension. Can you refinance when you're retired, says Steve? Yes, in limited circumstances. Um, so once again, talk to your mortgage broker. Last slide, um, I am recording the webinar and looking at it, it is still recording, so fingers crossed. So have a chat to your branch manager or property mentor for the recording. Um, I will uh, look to update it on the Dowland Wealth Management Facebook page. Um, Google us if you're interested in working with us. Find us on Advisor Ratings. Find your current advisor on Advisor Ratings. Um, we do everything through Zoom. If you're looking to work with someone close to you, you can put in the postcode in Advisor Ratings. So I know many people here, property investors, so their knowledge on non-property non -property matters is limited. Advisor Ratings is a great place to start. Now, for clients of Dablin Financial Planning, we always have what we call a deep dive session to discuss the webinar, and we have an hour meeting scheduled on Friday the 7th of July at four o'clock, where we'll just have a Zoom meeting and we'll talk about any questions. And for the deep dive sessions, I, I act as a facilitator and it's actually clients helping clients. So thank you very much for your attention this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you do need assistance, I look forward to working with you. Don't forget the survey at the end. And if you do watch it on Facebook, I'd really appreciate a like or a share. Have a good evening and look forward to talking to you again. Bye for now, everyone.